That's the very latest. Well, it's all about the Scottish National Party at the moment. Up there, they are taking seat after seat in Scotland. It looks like they are on course for a Scottish landslide. Out of a possible 59 seats, they have 31 so far. Scottish Labour leader Jim Murphy has lost his seat to the SNP. That's Gordon Brown's former seat of Kirkcaldy. The SNP have won Paisley off Labour campaign chief Douglas Alexander. And they have also gained Falkirk, Glenrothes, all. Altchill and Motherwell. Motherwell was actually one of uh, Labour's safest seats, so it's bad news for Ed Miliband this evening. And it's looking like quite a, a, a rough night for him at the moment, as we've learned that his must-win seat of Nuneaton in the West Midlands has been taken by the Conservatives. Castle Point has seen a Conservative win, but what we are seeing here is UKIP creeping back into second place with a 32% share of the vote. The Liberal Democrats have been fighting very hard to keep hold of Dumbarton, but disappointingly for them, the SNP has won that seat. Experts have been saying, based on the BBC uh, exit poll results, that it can't be possible for the Liber Liberal Democrats to do so bad. Well, it looks like they can. They've also been saying that it can't be possible for the SNP to do so well. Well, it certainly looks like it is possible. The SNP obviously standing for Scottish independence, but also a lot of sharp pledges, um, including a spending increase, enabling £140 billion extra investment, and a minimum wage increase um, from what it is at the moment, £6.50 to £8.70 by 2020. We'll bring you more results as they come in. That's all from me for now. Back to the studio. And breaking news just now. It appears we may have the Eastleigh result. We are trying our very hardest to get in contact with Alex Delaney, who is there. But unfortunately, we don't have it now. So I am going to turn over to Henry Nixon to discuss the Eastleigh constituency. Now, this is probably one of the most interesting constituencies that we are going to cover tonight. And if anything, it just shows the rise of UKIP. If we go back to the 2010 general election, UKIP... Uh, made next to no impression. In the 2013 by-election, just three years later, they were the second biggest party with a six-fold increase in the vote. They've been polling very strongly for a few years now. In the European elections, they were the biggest party in the UK. And I think you have to look at what voters in the UK, in Eastleigh and also elsewhere, are saying yes to in this election. They're saying yes to an EU referendum. They're saying yes to stricter controls on immigration. They're saying yes to a party which has made bold general promises but has backed it up with little uh, specifics. So I think in Eastleigh it's going to be between UKIP and Conservatives looking how the Lib Dems have performed tonight. Yeah. Uh, if we look at the polls, uh, the latest poll was from September, so it's a little bit out of date, but I believe... I would love to continue this discussion, Harry, but it appears we do have uh, Alex Delaney in Eastleigh, who should be about to tell us the result. Alex Delaney, are you there? Can you hear us? Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm here. I'm hearing you. Uh, we just, just have news the account is in. Uh, the results should be coming to us any time now. The candidates have just been gathered together. Uh, they will be being told. Uh, like the outcome, so we should have results for you in just a few minutes. Uh, at the moment, the sense seems to be that Conservatives have taken the seat. We'll obviously find out in a few minutes whether that's true or not. Uh, when Mims Davis arrived just a few minutes ago, there was a, a very large applause. Um, the supporters seem to think she's won. Some of the other supporters seem to think that she's won. So we're just now waiting for confirmation of that. Yeah. Um, what is the expect? Is that any better? Yep, this is fine. What is yeah. the expectation like in yeah. Eastleigh? Is it likely to fall to the Conservatives, or will Mike Thornton stay in charge? Um, yes, they're at the point. I think they've been brilliant about something, but um, yeah, they're not quite in the safe yet. That's what we think at the moment. Yeah, uh, they did some sampling earlier, and the sample showed that the Conservatives had the seat and the sources suggested that it was by quite a large majority as well. Uh, some of the opposition actually left the building a few hours ago. The deputy UKIP leader was seen leaving the building and as he left he congratulated one of the Tory leaders uh, shaking, shaking his hand and saying well done 
Uh, we had Mums Davis arrive just a few moments ago, and there were plenty of comments congratulating her. As I say, we've not had the actually announcement yet that she has won the seat, but people seem to be thinking that she has. It could be an extraordinary result because, as I was discussing with Henry, if we look back to the Absolutely. polls... Absolutely, I mean, if... Sorry. From uh, Lord Ashcroft's poll from September, uh, the Lib Dems did have a 15-point lead over the Conservatives. So in just a few uh, matter of months... Uh, it's all turned on its head. How much of a blow would this be to Lib Dems, considering as well the catastrophic events that are happening tonight? I mean, this, this would be a huge blow for the Lib Dems. Uh, Nick Clegg was quoted just a few weeks ago saying that if the, if the Liberal Democrats can have 60 seats like Eastleigh, then they will be fine. Now it seems if they have 60 seats like easily, they'll be destroyed. So they're in, they're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, Alex, do you know whenabouts the result will be read out? Uh, I don't have any update. If you will notice just behind me, the candidates are actually all gathering. I'm not sure whether you can see that or not. Uh, but the candidates have all been gathered. They'll be being briefed. Uh, so the results should be coming imminently. That's all I can tell you at the moment, I'm afraid, but we, we think that that should be coming soon. Uh, the count has completely seized. Everyone's sitting, everyone's waiting for the result. Uh, the atmosphere has gone very quiet. A few minutes ago, it was much more, much more lively. People were congratulating Mims. There was a real buzz, and now the place has gone very quiet. Everyone's just waiting to have confirmation of this result. Alex Delaney in Eastleigh, keeping us on tenterhooks. Thank you very much. And following on from Alex, we are now heading over to the newsroom where uh, we should be having some imminent developments. Well, it appears we're not going to the newsroom just yet. We are, in fact, going to go back to Eastleigh with Alex, like Alex has said. 40 years until 1994, so for them, they really wanted to get this seat back. And the Lib Dems, of course, didn't want to lose this seat because for them it was crucial to keep every seat they could. Uh, Eastleigh was seen as one of the seats that they absolutely could hang on to. So, of course, if they don't tonight, then that will be a huge blow for them. But we've seen big guns from all of the major parties coming down in the last few months. We've had Nick Clegg was down. We've had Ed Miller and we've had David Cameron. All of the big names, all of the stars have been down to show how much to show to the people of Eastleigh how much the vote matters to the parties. And Alex, in your opinion, if Eastleigh does fall to the Conservatives and obviously bringing into, result, uh, bringing into account what is happening tonight, does Nick Clegg have no choice but to resign? I mean, it would certainly seem like a very, very dark time for Nick Clegg, whether that would lead to his resignation is something that we can only speculate to. But after tonight, it really doesn't look good for the Lib Dems and whether that will cause them to question whether they maybe need a new leader, whether that will cause Nick Clegg to question maybe he isn't right for the party anymore. We don't know, but it's certainly not anywhere near the night that the Lib Dems would have wanted to have had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even, even the secure seats that they thought they had, they don't seem to be hanging on to. So the Lib Dems, it's really just been a, a catastrophe. We are going to just stay on the line with you, Alex, and try and bring some more stuff out it's of you. It's gone very quiet behind me now, so the results should be coming very soon, we believe. Excellent. Everyone um, seems to be knowing something that we don't. <laughs> so what is the reaction from the party leaders? They started packing moment? away before the results been announced, so that's presumably a good sign that news is coming. And what is the reaction to the party leaders at the moment? Uh, well, as I said, the uh, party leaders have actually all been gathered into a huddle, so we can't really tell what their reactions are. They are just seeing the back of their heads at the moment. Um, but before they were gathered in, I spoke to the leaders. Uh, Ron Meldrum from the Greens, he was quite happy. He said, we might not win a seat here, but that wasn't our objective. We knew that we weren't going to win a lot of seats in this election. That wasn't our plan. Our plan was just to increase our support nationally, increase our membership. And he feels like they've done that. He feels they've made progress. 
Patricia Gulligan, Patricia Culligan will be uh, disappointed because, as she said when I spoke to her earlier, Eastley they thought was winnable for UKIP. So if they haven't won this seat, that will surely be a blow for them. Uh, Labour, I spoke to Mark Latham and he doesn't seem too deflated. I think he's still hopeful that the Labour can do something tonight. If they don't get Eastley, it's not the end of the world for Labour, but it's also not ideal because for them at the moment, every seat really does matter. We've seen the exit polls. We've seen the suggestions that the Conservatives are going to be the one with most seats. So, yeah. And at the turn of the year, Alex... They really do want to win every seat they can if they want to have any chance of being in government. Going back to the Conservatives, at the beginning of the year uh, in Eastleigh, we did see uh, a lot of Conservative ministers one by one coming down to the constituency. So do you think that has just managed to sway the vote in their favour? I think, I think that certainly will have played its part. I think with having these big guns that the Conservatives can bring out, having these recognisable faces, I think that does have an influence just in terms of drawing attention to the party and how seriously they're taking easily as a constituency. But I think you can't underplay the work that Mims Davis has done. She's worked very hard. She's been doing, of course, all the candidates have been working very hard in this election. But I don't think you can pin any successes or failures on whether the party leaders have been involved, because at the end of the day, it really is about what the, what the candidates here have been doing, what they've been doing with the people on the streets, you know, knocking on people's doors what they promise to do locally if they get in. So I think, yeah, to an extent, the influence of the bigger names of, of Cameron and of Osborne, I think that will have had an effect or will have been a morale booster. But in terms of the actual result, I think you've got to give credit to the candidates themselves. Excellent stuff. And Alex, just quickly, will you be a little bit disappointed? Uh, apologies. Uh, Alex, and to everyone who is listening to that, because we are going to go to the green room now with Shirelle, uh, who should be with some special guests uh, to hear the reaction to this very latest and breaking news. I'm back with the university's dean of chapel, Peter Waddell. So, Peter, um, how do you think? Uh, what do you think? Sorry, will happen now for the Liberal Democrats? Well, first of all. Uh, they're going to have to count how many of them are left. I think at the moment they're standing on two MPs, uh, one of whom is Tim Farron. I can't remember who the other one is at the moment. Um, both Ed Davies just lost his seat. Uh, Vince Cable's in very serious trouble in, in Twickenham. Uh, Nick Clegg's in serious trouble in Sheffield Hallam. Uh, they have been destroyed uh, as a parliamentary party in this election. Uh, and I think... Um, that there's going to be a long period of licking wounds, that they're certainly not going to be in government. Uh, yeah. There'll be a, a long period of soul searching. I suppose the one thing you can say is in 1988, um, the Liberal Democrats, Social and Liberal Democrats, as they were at that point, registered 0.2% in national polling. So that they have been here before, and, right. they've, and they've come back to quite a prominent position. But uh, undeniably, this is... I think this is worse, worse than their worst nightmares before they went into this, before they, the votes started to be counted. Okay. I don't think they would have dreamed it would be as bad as this. No. So what do you think that the results so far um, mean for the United Kingdom? I think it's very worrying, for the, extremely worrying for the United Kingdom. I mean, essentially what has happened is that every single constituency in Scotland has voted for a party that wants to end the union, and even leaving that rather important thing on one side, has voted for a party which utterly rejects the current direction, both economic, social and cultural, of the dominant party in England. And quite how you can hold two countries together under one system of government that are going in such fundamentally divergent directions, I'm not sure. And I think a, a huge task for the next Prime Minister, assumptions, it, it, will, it will be David Cameron, is what does he do? I mean, you, you can't just, well, you could just press on in those circumstances, but then we'll probably have another independence referendum and the United Kingdom will probably come to an end if he does that. So it's either that, the end of the union within the next 10 years, 
five years perhaps, uh, or something really imaginative from Cameron, some very broad ranging offer of fresh powers to Scotland. Uh, but it's a, it's a really tricky situation. I think the union, funnily enough, the union's in more danger now yeah. than it was the day before the referendum. Right. Okay. So should the Conservatives win, um, uh, how will this... They've won. They've <laughs> won. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they've won. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. how will, th how will um, this differ from the current uh, like ruling of the country? From the current coalition government? I think... I think one of the reasons the Liberals have been pulverised quite as badly as they have been is that it's been rather difficult for most voters to answer the question, what has having the Liberal Democrats in government, what difference has that made? Uh, I find that a rather difficult question to answer because the things that the Liberals have been most keen on, for example, the raising of the personal tax-free allowance, actually the Conservatives are very happy with that policy as well. Oh, right. So it's difficult to see what the Liberals have actually contributed. Sorry, Peter, I'm going to have to just interrupt you there. Yep. And uh, I think we might have some news, so we're going to have to go back to the studio. Yes, indeed. And we should be hearing the results of Eastleigh very, very soon. Let's go back to Alex Delaney, who is still there. Alex, what can you tell us? Stephen. Hi, guys. So at the moment, they're just counting up the uh, spoil ballots, as far as we know. I'm just actually hearing the approximate totals now. So I'm just, just listening out to try and work out what's happening. It seems to be confirming what we already thought, uh, that the Conservatives have taken the seat. Excellent stuff. We're still going to have to wait for the official confirmation, which should be any minute now. Uh, there was obviously a, a large number of spoil ballots. That's why it's taking so long. But the, uh, the process is almost there. We're almost at the finish line. Is there any indication of how big? Uh, and it's just come in, just hearing that the Tories have won. Uh, we've just got to wait for the, uh, 23,000 votes, so that's quite a large majority. Well, my next question. That's the total. Sorry, I'm just getting some news in now, so bear with me. It's a very large So if the information that I've just received is correct, then the Conservatives have won the seat, and by quite a large margin. The last couple of elections we've seen here have been very narrow margins. Uh, it's been, you know, the, the matter of a couple of thousand votes. It's been a matter of four or five percent, whereas this time around, the figures I've just received are correct. They've won by almost 10,000 votes, which, of course, is huge for the Conservatives and raises very large questions about the Lib Dems in a seat in a seat where they were they were safe, they've held the seat since 1994. To lose by such a large margin, if these numbers are correct, is catastrophic for them. Was there, was there real shock? Just, just waiting, we should be getting the result in a second. As I say, they're just counting their score of ballots now. As you can probably see behind me, the, uh, the stage has been emptied. The returning officer is coming to the stage now. I think they're just double checking all the calculations. So we're just waiting for that confirmation now. We've had the figures, we've had the, the estimated totals, and the estimated totals say that the Conservatives have won easily and that they have won it by a very large margin. Those are just the estimated totals. So we need to wait for the official confirmation, but that's the news down here so far. And we should be getting official confirmation about any minute now. I'm just looking behind me to see what's going on. And while we wait for the confirmation from the Eastern yep. results, we will talk to Henry Nixon. So it looks as though it has fallen, yep. Eastley has fallen to the Conservatives. What are your thoughts on that? It sounds like it. It sounds not by, as Alex said, a small margin either. Uh, people have, have come out in, in power and in force and in numbers, and that's what's made a big difference to the Conservatives. People have voiced their approval of their participation in the coalition compared to the Lib Dems. And something that uh, Peter, uh, that we had touched on earlier, is how um, the Lib Dems have failed in the coalition and how the public image of them is, is weak. 
Why do you think so many people have rejected the Liberal Democrats as emphatically as they had? Tonight? I think, uh, in my opinion, I think they were they were led into it uh, from the start of the coalition. Uh, Ed, um, sorry, Nick Clegg said in an interview with the BBC a few months ago that uh, he felt Westminster was spectacularly unprepared for a coalition government, and that's now, you know, that's sort of not going to matter so much now because it looks like it's going to be a conservative majority. We we'll just wait and see if we can perhaps get back in touch with Alex and Ian Eastley. Uh, still waiting on Alex and Ian to get back in. But uh, to discuss Eastley just a little bit further, I mean, was the writing on the wall for Lib Dems? Because, like I said, in the 2013 by election, the margin of victory between the Liberal Democrats and the UKIP was very, very small, only by a matter of uh, 1,700 or so votes. So this has been just an emphatic rejection of Liberal Democrats for the past couple of years. It has. Easley is a, a very interesting constituency, slightly different to other constituencies uh, in regard to the amount of fringe parties that are, are polling there. So I think looking at the numbers, according to um, Alex there, uh, the Conservatives won with around 20, 20 to 25,000 votes. Now, it was 48 to 44,000 uh, between the Lib Dems and UKIP previously, so those votes look like they're going to be spread across a much wider base than previously. Will UKIP feel slightly disappointed that they didn't perhaps push this seed even further because they did open up the fabled UKIP shop, which uh, Winnell did cover. But as we look at the poll, from September 2014, they were in with a realistic chance of putting pressure on Liberal Democrats, but doesn't seem to have come off. I think this, this was always uh, going to be a three-way marginal, but the really interesting thing, I think, as you say, UKIP would have pushed much, much harder if they'd have known that it had any insight into the Conservatives taking it. Uh, they would have, you know, Mike Thornton losing it is, is very, very uh, important for them and they will see in their in their strategy that they should have they should have with retrospect they should have pushed much harder in that area uh, just quickly off the subject obviously because we do have uh, some very intriguing news uh, Laura Quinsberg I hope I've pronounced that right I probably haven't chief correspondent of news night has said a source in the Labour Party has just texted me to say the leadership contest starts tomorrow Another has told me they want Ed M gone by Monday and the bloodletting leadership battle ASAP. What do you make of that? Well, that's two very, very conflicting messages there, and it shows the infighting that is currently going on in the Labour Party. Of course it's going on. You know, they, they had no idea that this tonight was going to hold such poor results for them. So this, as it's titled, bloodletting battle is just getting started. And I've just seen Ed Miliband has left his house uh, on his way to Doncaster for the vote, he's going to be feeling pretty sheepish, and he's going to know that his place in uh, his place as Labour leader isn't as n anywhere near as safe as it was yesterday. Lovely stuff. Uh, just before uh, we go on to the actual results of Eastleigh, let's just remind ourselves of the constituency profile. the cottage industry of pessimism about our fortunes, and, and we won. The Lib Dems held on to Eastleigh and a bitterly fought 2013 by-election. It is a seat the Conservatives would expect to win, but a large turnout for UKIP, who came second, split the right of centre vote. It's not just me they voted in, it's a whole bunch of people who want to help me do my job really well, and they've got to keep me grounded, I mean, you, at the moment, I'm high, really high up. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> legally, quite legally. <laughs> it's really important. Bye for now. Bye-bye. This is a, a landmark election as to whether you want the recovery to continue or not. And in Eastley, look at the huge drop in unemployment. More jobs are being created here. Eastley is recovering. Unemployment has dropped by a thousand over the last five years. There are more opportunities, particularly for young people, to get into apprenticeships, to get into training, and we want that recovery to continue. You might think that Eastleigh was an old Hampshire market town. 
and we're going to cut this uh, profile short because we're going straight to Eastley with Alex Delaney. Hi guys, so the uh, planning officer has just called the candidates to the stage. They're uh, going up to the stage now, I'm sure you can see behind me. So the results should be coming in any second. And does it look, what you can see there, does it look like the Conservatives have won? for you that the uh, UKIP candidate, Patricia Culligan, has actually left. She doesn't appear to be here. So what that means for you, Kip, it's, uh, we can only speculate, but apparently she doesn't think that she's done well enough to stay for the result. Alex, if you can hear me, does it look like the candidates have uh, confirmed that the Conservatives yeah. have taken easily? Better. Yeah. Alex, if you can hear me. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yep. What do the candidates look like? Does uh, Mims Davis look like she has taken Eastley? Does she look very happy? Nervous. With <laughs> she looks apprehensive at the moment. I'm sure she's quietly confident, but she's not displaying it if she is. Uh, the, the candidates all look very, very apprehensive at the moment. They're awaiting their fates, as it were. Min certainly doesn't look like she knows she's already won. She doesn't look like she believes that, but whether that's, uh, whether that's a show or not, we'll find out in just a few moments. And just very quickly, Alex, what does this seat mean for the Conservatives in terms of the wider election? In terms of the wider election, I think this, this could be pretty major for the Conservatives. It's one of the seats that Lib Dems absolutely had to hold on to. It's one of the seats that the Lib Dems absolutely believe they could hold on to. So for the Conservatives to take the seat from under them would be a massive blow for the Lib Dems and it would be a massive boost for the Conservatives. It's one seat they wouldn't have expected to win in the calculations of before the election, who was going to win what seats, who was going to win where, who was going to have a majority and all of those polls and calculations Eastleigh was one of those seats that we thought was going to be Lib Dem, so the Conservatives won't have accounted for that. So for them, this is going to be a real bonus. And why do you think people have switched to Conservatives? And I understand that Patricia has returned to the stage. Yeah, she's back there now. She has returned. So the candidates are now all on the stage, or preparing to be on the stage. Just awaiting the announcement now. Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. Can you guys still hear me there? Yep, we can still hear you, Alex. Tell us what's yeah, going so on. So that huddle of people just over there, that's the candidates. And um, we're just waiting the uh, confirmation as to whether or not Conservatives have taken the seat. So the candidates, we believe, have now been told as a result. Uh, we're just waiting for them to get onto the stage and for the result to be confirmed. There still seems to be some confusion with some of the ballots, but we're not sure what it is. Where we believe they just counted up the spoil ballots, so I don't think it's that. The candidates all appear to be very relaxed, which is uh, maybe a little bit surprising. Mike Thornton's sharing a laugh with uh, with one of the Labour campaigners, so he's obviously not too bothered. Ron Meldrum, the Green Party candidate, is just displaying a bit of tap dance for Mims Davis, the Conservative councillor, so it's all good humour and uh, evidently no bad bloods. Whether they've just been told the result or not, but they don't appear to be sharing any bad blood, so that's, that's a positive, I guess. Patricia Culligan, the, uh, the only one who doesn't look like she's having a good time. Very stern-faced. Yes! <laughs> Through a premature celebration there, perhaps. <laughs> so, as I say, we're just waiting now for the, uh, for the candidates to be called onto the stage. We've also just had some minor celebrations here that uh, the Justice Minister, Simon Hughes, has lost his seat to Labour. 
a Labour supporters here are obviously very happy about that, whether they're about to be made more happy or not. And Mike Thornton there has just congratulated Mims Davis. So that seems to suggest that he knows the result. Of course, what we could see now would be for Ron Meldrum to walk onto the stage and for them to announce that the Green Party, which of course no one would expect. And that would really be a shocking news story, but that doesn't seem too likely at the moment. And we're having a speaker approaching the stage now. Not quite sure what the deliberation is. Still seems to be some issue with the last few ballots. Thornton there just on the, uh, the left of the gathering of candidates evidently in, in, in a good mood whether that means that he's won or not we don't know sure. while we're just waiting for the result what is the atmosphere like in the room you mentioned that Mike Thornton was laughing and joking but uh, in terms of the wider atmosphere, what is it like in Eastleigh? Okay, we seem to have lost Alex for the time being, so we will uh, instead chat to Henry Nixon. Uh, Henry, like uh, we've mentioned earlier, it's pretty much been a catastrophic election for the Liberal Democrats. And to go from holding Eastleigh, which was their only real power base down here in the south to absolutely nothing is a huge blow not only for the party but for Nick Clegg as well and his reputation. It is and we are likely to see the Conservatives take easily. Further afield just come in uh, in the last few minutes Simon Hughes, uh, senior liberal, liberal Democrat and portfolio holder has lost his seat in Bermondsey and Old Southwark to Labour so that's another Lib Dem casualty this time a very, very big player. So if rumours were to be true, we could be seeing both the Labour Party leader... Oh, I, will go, I will come back to you very shortly, Henry, but first we will be going to Alex Lady in Eastleigh. Alex. I now have the declaration of results of poll for the Eastleigh constituency for the election of a Member of Parliament for Eastleigh. I, Alan Richard Ward, being the acting returning officer at the above election, do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Clune, Declan Peter, Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition. Cullingham, Patricia, UK... Independence Party, UK, 8,783 votes. <laughs> Davis Mims, the Conservative Party candidate, 23,464 votes. <laughs> Paul Ray, Beer, Backy and Scratchins, 133 votes. <laughs> Latham, Mark Lawrence, Labour Party, 7,181 votes. <laughs> Meldrum, Mark Lawrence, 
from from Green Party, 1,513 votes. Yay! Thornton Mike, Liberal Democrat, 14,317 votes. There were 158 small ballot papers and the turnout was 69.9%. And I do hereby declare that Mims Davis is duly elected <laughs> Member of Parliament for Eastleigh. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and it has been an extremely long night. So may I please thank the returning officer and all the staff and everyone who's been involved to make sure that this is a fair uh, election and safe, of course, with our police in attendance as well. May I thank my fellow candidates. It has been a wonderful campaign where we all have got on extremely well. We've worked very, very hard. And I know certainly my campaign team left no stone unturned to, to make a difference in this fine constituency. And uh, I must, of course, thank my campaign team, particularly my agent, Judy Jameson, my wonderful campaign manager, Freya Burgess, and all my campaign team. Thank you very much indeed. Many of them here tonight, and many of them luckily still in bed. Um, I will work extremely hard for Eastleigh. I will assure all the electors who have put their trust in me tonight and those that perhaps uh, chose a different candidate that I will do my absolute best to be a strong voice in Westminster for this constituency. Tonight, we have made history once again as the Conservative Party here in Eastleigh. Back in 1992, we last had a Member of Parliament for Eastleigh, and I'm absolutely delighted to be the new Conservative Member of Parliament and the first female MP for Eastleigh. So, an absolute honour. Thank you very much. Tonight, we, the Conservatives, have put Eastleigh back on the map, and I'm absolutely delighted with the strength of the majority that I've been showing this evening. We have worked extremely hard since last September in every type of weather and we have enjoyed every single bit of it and we will continue to do so for our country and our constituency for the next five years. Locally, there are things that I would like to achieve, not because I know them, because people have told me what matters to them. It is the transport system. It is the lack of NHS provision. It is the pollution and the congestion. And I will do my utmost to make those changes happen across Eastleigh constituency. May I thank you all for your attention tonight. And I wish all my candidates good luck, uh, fellow candidates going forward, particularly to Mike, who's been a fine opponent and worked extremely hard for this constituency so far. And I think tonight has hopefully shown that Eastleigh has put the Conservatives back on the map, just like 1992. And I hope that this is a sign for our party across the rest of the night and this morning. Thank you very much. Hours ago, the Mims Davis Conservative <laughs> candidate has taken. Oh, That's the plan. Well, well, thank you very much, Mims, and I echo your thanks to everyone here, the police, the returning officer. If I just get a it was laborious, but we managed to get there in the end. Just to recap some of the results for you there, uh, third place was UKIP. They polled 8,783 votes. Uh, in second place was the Liberal Democrats with 14,317 and Conservatives, Mims Davis, 
out in front, 23,464. Just to put that into context, in the 2013 Eastleigh by-election, uh, the Conservative candidate Maria Hutchins only polled 10,559. Uh, so the increase of around 13,000 is actually similar numbers to uh, Mike Thornton in 2013 when he held uh, the Eastleigh seat in the 2013 by-election. So, Henry, you've heard the numbers. It makes the vote all the more impressive that the Conservatives have managed to take Eastleigh by a considerable margin. More than double. In two years, it's very, very surprising. It's uh, a very big gain for them in the South, very big gain for them with national importance. I think David Cameron will, will be... He will, someone will be telling him this result now and he will have a big smile on his face. Henry Nixon, thank you very much. And finally, we will be going to an ad break, but please do stay with us as the countdown to the end of the general election 2015 goes on and there are still many more constituencies to come.